eight formulas I've ever come across. I thought I knew school eight formulas fairly well. He's just the master at them. So he can, um, he comes into areas and he will do the presentation of your school districts in a particular area showing you what you should have got, what you should get, yada, da, da, da. And he's, he's done a great job at lobbying the state to make some changes. So in the school funding issues, I'm fairly comfortable that we're moving in the right direction. Um, the student motivation part, I, I'm not so sure. I mean, I think we have isolated pockets of parents who want their students to do better, um, but I'm not sure that's universal. And, and we all know that if a student is not motivated and has, does not have a lot of success in high school, they can become the issues of the future. Those are the ones that might become prisoners. Those are the ones that might get in jail. Those are the ones that might be unemployed. They might be on government assistance. I think Dr. Daggett the other night said there's 128 million people in this country between the ages of 18 and 65 who are unemployed and, uh, or at least partially unemployed, uh, meaning part-time work, and are on government assistance. So somehow we need, and, and obviously that's not a sustainable model. You can't continue to go in debt like we do to continue to help everyone. Um, so we need to figure out ways to get these people some skill sets and get them into the workforce so they can start paying taxes and we regroup the system. Um, I don't see much headway in that one from, from my readings and just talking to people. Do you, do you think that's primarily associated with poverty in the county? I mean, it seemed like that there were parents who one, they didn't want their kids to be smarter than them, and two, they uh, they didn't like school, so they didn't translate any of that to, they didn't see how their educations benefited them in any way, or they didn't like Absolutely, them. Julie, I think that's exactly what goes on here, and somehow we have to get to that set of parents to say, we, we want your kids to be successful. You should want to have your kids be successful. But you're right, they had a bad experience, so you won't like school, or whatever that um, socioeconomic issue is at home. I mean, we all know the studies are out there, whether that's Ruby Payne's uh, studies on, on poor um, people and behavior, um, whether that's reading levels. I mean, we do everything we can. Now we're into trying to educate three-year-olds, four-year-olds. Used to be you came to school when you were in five or six-year-old. Now we're down to four and threes trying to get those that vocabulary and literacy based up so that we all know that if a student can read and write very well, they're gonna do pretty good in school. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know what the answer to that one is. Yeah. And, you know, that's a bigger one than I've ever tried to tackle, that's for sure. And the last one is Common Core. I mean, I think Common Core, um, like I said, is a, I think it's a good thing. I think standards are good. I think we should be compared with other districts. We should be compared with other um, states, but we need to solve the equity issues so that we're all we're all on, a, uh, on an equal basis. Um, but I think with the recent commissioners, um, new commissioner coming in, I think she'll be more practical. I mean, she's been in the trenches. She's been a teacher. She's been an administrator. She's been a superintendent. She's been um, in a big district. Um, nothing against Dr. King, but he really didn't have public school experience. Um, so I think this change will be good for the people, the stakeholders that are in the schools. Um, and now I, I just heard an announcement that the governor has gone after a new education commission um, from the old commission. He's taken a select group of people to go after and look at the standards and see where that could go. Well, that can be good and uh, that can be bad. If you're going into next year's legislative session and those recommendations are there and the politicians now get involved and pass new laws, that can be good if it corrects the problem. If it doesn't correct the problem, then we have the same thing we had before. We have the, the newest solution becomes the newest enemy. So I don't know where that one will go. Okay. Um, we were talking a little bit about, especially I think students in poverty, and so schools have taken on more of the socialization role. 
Can you just talk a little bit about? Yeah, I mean, I think schools. You know, I think schools have always been uh, of the volition, at least around Chautauqua County, the ones I know, of trying to develop a complete student. You know, we want them to be smart and do good at school, but we also are worried about their um, about the physical part of them, the emotional part. Um, you know, we need a complete person to go out and become a good citizen to keep our democracy and our dem democratic way of thinking going. That we we're, should work on that and it, and it continues to be an ongoing thing. I think a lot of times we've had critiques of people, uh, whether they're writing editorials, whether they're on a local radio show, whatever, saying, well, Jamestown or Chautauqua Lake or Sherman isn't doing this. Well, we're doing that. Um, whether it's successful with all students comes back to some motivation issues that we talked about. Right. But it also comes back to we're also trying to develop other things. You know, physical education is an important area of developing. Um, uh, emotionally, you know, counselors, things of that nature. Those are all important. People have problems. They need to voice those problems and get them out so that they're not eating at them uh, their whole life. So I think development of a complete student is is much more important than just, I always say, give me a good B student any day of the week because I think they're the well-rounded group. Uh, sometimes the A student kids are that are very, very intelligent um, also are a little eccentric, but that's just my opinion, <laughs> you know. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Ray? Um, any other points you wanted to make or have we, we you know, is anything we need to cover more about? Anything you can think of, Sarah, maybe? Or? I just have a quick, not to put you on the spot, but I, I know you worked kind of as, I think it was a Jamestown principal and then a superintendent through your career. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any examples of a need that you saw in this Jamestown Public School District and kind of a start to finish how you addressed the need and then either worked with the students or the faculty to kind of... Well, I, I'll go back to when I first came to Jamestown. I think I came in 99. Um, it took me six, seven months to kind of assess the system and find out, I thought, what our strengths, weaknesses were. We put together a plan. Um, our plan centered on, I thought that students and teachers would be better off in good environments, working in a good environment. I thought some of our facilities were in very, very poor condition. And so um, I believe they had just passed a large referendum um, when I got here. And then we passed, I think, two more after that. So somewhere along the line over 10 years, and then Mr. Kaufman passed, I think, another one. So we had uh, a number of, amount of, a large amount of money going into facilities that needed to be upgraded. And why do we want to upgrade facilities? I think we want people to be proud of their environments. If you are in a good, nice office space with proper lighting, proper ventilation, um, I think you work better. And I think there's no different than whether that's a student, a principal, or a, a teacher if you're in a nice environment. And so that was day one, what we were trying to do was try to make Jamestown feel proud of themselves and say, well, all right, let's move forward now. And then I think the second thing was, um, I don't think the staff had been addressed by a superintendent before. So I was always, um, I always opened the school year with a presentation at the high school because I wanted everyone to kind of know where I was going, what we were working on as an administration, so that it wasn't fragmented. Uh, we wanted everyone to say, come on board, or if there, there was things that we were going down the wrong pathway, feel free to email me or make an appointment with me or whatever. And I, I think I pretty lived by an open door policy. If people showed up in my office, they could get in to see me. Um, so those were all corrections as you go, the dynamics of a plan. Um, I think it's important. Does that help? It does, yes. Um, and then just for my, I'm sure Julie knows, but I know after you retired, now you're still involved with the school board? Is it through just the yeah. city school or countywide? No, I'm executive director of Stock County School Boards okay. Association. So uh, we meet five times a year um, with um, all the school districts are invited to a dinner meeting that we usually bring in some sort of speaker 
that they've wanted uh, that may help them in their board lives uh, become better board members in Chautauqua County. Um, then the last one of the year is what we call the Honors Night, and that's where we ask all of our school districts to give us two outstanding students. They don't always have to be baccalaureate and salutatorians, but two outstanding students that we could come together and basically provide a meal for them. And um, we don't give them a lot. We give them a certificate and a keychain, basically saying thank you for a great job. But the nice thing about that evening is we get the parents to come, we get the principals to come, we get the superintendents to come, and board members to come. And they're all usually at the same table, so they're able to communicate with each other. And there's probably more good that happens at that table than the presentation itself. So um, that's that's kind of like the highlight of the whole year. Like this year, we just had Dr. Daggett come in. Our next speaker will be um, her name is Barb Bradley. She's the um, she's associated with the New York State School Board Association, but she's going to do social media in the schools. So where do we need to go with Twitter, Instagram, you know, Facebook, all of those things? Because a lot of board members don't participate in that kind of technology. Um, our third speaker is dealing with STEM, uh, Michelle Cavanaugh from the Western New York STEM uh, group. And then uh, our fourth one is dealing with government relations. Julie Marlette is the new director of government relations. In she will help us try to decide how to lobby the legislators properly to get, you know, whether that's equitable funding, whether that's changes in Common Core that we think should be done, not necessarily what the politicians think to be done. So that's this year's program. And then, of course, we finish in May with the honors time.